Hi, Chad here with Purple Color Life. If you watched the last video, you saw we got the buck stove and the chimney pipe all ready for winter. In this video, I want to talk to you a little bit about this buck stove, and uh, in the meantime, we'll get a fire started. So, a couple things about the buck stove. This is the model 91, which I believe is the largest model that buck stove makes. It's a 55,000 BTU wood burner, and uh, if you know much about wood burners, that's a massive amount of BTUs from a wood stove. And it's done really well for us. This is the catalytic combustion chamber version. So it's a little bit different than a normal wood stove. A couple interesting things about this wood stove. You've got to get it really hot. So there is a thermostat here. And I'll show you a picture of that. But the catalytic combustion actually happens between about 600 and roughly 1,500 degrees, a little more than that. So you got to get a good hot fire going in here to get that combustion going. And then it actually burns the gases off of the log as it's burning the wood. So you don't see as many large, big flames. What you want to see are a little bit of colored flames of the gases, the off gases burning off of the wood as the wood burns. And that keeps a good hot fire, keeps that combustion chamber going. And then there is a fan system that blows the air out from underneath this metal plate. That fan is adjustable down here. It can be automatic or on manual, and then the speed's adjustable. That's the only thing we've had to place, replace in this was the blower fan at one point. It was an easy task to do, and uh, we had no problem doing it. And like we say, that, that fan runs a lot because this thing puts out a lot of heat. So to start a fire, and I'm not saying this is the perfect way to do it, but this is how I've learned to do it with this buck stove in our house. The buck stove has two air inlet regulators, one on each side. They're sliding. So to get it started, I get both of them open. Make sure that the damper is the whole way opened. And then I burn regular newspaper paper, ball it up nice and tight. Don't use any of the uh, slick paper that's got that that glossy coating on it like a lot of the ads would have. We don't burn that, just the regular newspaper type paper. You can see I ball that paper up and put it right in the center. Then I have a little board here I chop the kindling on. The kindling's just scrap pieces of pine. I also make sure that the stove is plugged in. I pretty much always leave my fan on auto and turn the blower about as high as it'll go. So I've got my kindling chopped up here and I don't have very long pieces of kindling this time but what I like to do is just stack it on top of the newspaper. I like to use the build a cabin method, but these pieces of kindling may not be long enough for that. Typically I would build a square cabin on top of the kindling, or on top of the paper. It's important that your wood be dry, both your kindling wood and your firewood. You want your firewood to be good and seasoned in every fire case, but especially if you've got the combustion chamber, catalytic combustion wood burner. Then I lean some of these up against the outside. The key is to get as many of these started as quickly as possible to get a good bed of coals in there for the firewood to take off. Now this is all cleaned out because we are ready for winter, but in between burnings, I do leave a little tiny bit of ash in there. I find that it keeps the coals hot longer to have a little bit of ash to be sitting on. There are fire bricks throughout the bottom of this wood burner. Okay, so I've got my kindling wood all stacked in there. The, some of the air for this wood burner comes right here. So I make sure that I keep that area open from the wood. Now I know some people like to go ahead and put a log in there right now to catch on. I prefer to get the kindling going first. 
and you'll see our house is very tight not much air leak so I will actually I've got a small window here I'm gonna open this small window to let the draft come through otherwise a lot of smoke comes down the chimney especially when the chimney's cold so I'm gonna open that window and then I'll show you another trick I'm gonna tear the newspaper into some strips and put those up on top. The purpose of this is to get some hot flames up here that'll just help heat the entire chimney up so that the draft starts pulling up through. Like I said, with the house being so tight, without some draft going up through from the combination of the window, and these hot newspapers on the top, uh, the smoke would just billow backwards until the chimney got hot. And you'll see we will get a little bit of smoke in here coming backwards until this takes off. Just go ahead and lighten a couple different places. Try to get as much of that newspaper going as we can. You can see we do have some smoke coming out. Now the instructions for the wood burner actually say to close the door completely and just let all the air pull through the air inlets. I actually find it's a little better if you just leave the door open a crack. You can see that lets that draft pull up through the chimney. Again, if I just leave that door open a crack, you can see it lets that draft pull up through. Now, at this point, the chimney is already starting to warm up. So I'm going to go ahead and close the window that I had opened that was letting the draft come through. Now that there's some draft going, I'm going to go ahead and close this door. And it'll be pulling the air through the shotgun blast and the air inlet. See, we've got a pretty good flame going here now. I'm going to put a piece of nice seasoned dry firewood in. And I'll just start with those two for now. You can see it's a very deep stove. You can put a lot of wood in, long pieces. I'm going to go ahead and close the door. I'm going to close the damper partially. Let the heat stay in there. I'm going to close the shotgun air inlet. So we'll let this go. I usually set a timer upstairs either on Alexa or on my phone or on the stove for about five to ten minutes and I'll come back down and check it. And as it warms up you'll be able to see the gauge here raise and I'll see when I'm finally in the key into the catalytic combustion zone I usually let it get about 800 degrees or so before I push this the whole way in. And then also I'll adjust the air intake so that there's just barely a flame in there and it's burning the gases. So we'll come back down a little bit but, uh, and show you what it's like when the fan's going. The fan's not super loud but it does make noise and it blows a lot of air out, uh, a lot of, of, of warm air and that's how you get that 55,000 BTUs of heat. I did want to show you once we got the temperature what the fan sounded like. You can see the little gauge shows that we're somewhere around a thousand degrees. No, I'm sorry, somewhere around 700 degrees. And you can kind of see how those flames are burning the gases. If you look up along the top that catalytic combustion is doing a great job of burning the gases and the smoke. It's actually a really amazing system. If you like videos like this, make sure you click that subscribe button, like, comment, and share, and we'll see you the next time. See the fire's still growing here. 
Now you can see why we spend so much time and it's so important to us to get that Pennsylvania hardwoods as it dies on our land and chop it up into usable firewood. It makes great firewood, the oak, the hickory, the maple, the cherry. You can see there's still a lot to heat up in here. We are still not even up to 200 degrees yet in the combustion chamber. 